Hello, good evening, welcome to another episode of Easy 8's Online Painting Club. My name's Danny, and for the next two hours I'm going to be painting my miniatures live on air, and I welcome you to come along and paint yours too, for this is what this is all about, it's a painting club, so if you've got stuff to paint, if you've got hordes of grey plastic that are longing to have some colour, bring them along, this is what it's all about, let's get them painted. Um, if you're new here, this isn't a tutorial show, I'm a little bit rubbish uh, and I tend to take a really long time still painting the same thing this week as I've been painting for the last few weeks, but it's absolutely fine. I, I'm, I'm not here to teach you what to do, there's probably loads of that stuff out there already. You should go and have a check, go and check it all out, go and have a check, go and have a look. You can tell it's live, can't you? Um, yeah, go, go find out loads of stuff and come and tell me about it and give me your thoughts and opinions on my models. Make some friends over here in the live chat with these guys. I've got Stafford, I've got Table of Horrors, I've got Keslin, I've got Overlord Games, I've got Yana, Adrian. Uh, here we go, says Overlord. Hi, everybody. Thanks very much for coming along. Nice to see you all again. Woo, <laughs> Fry, yeah, says Overlord. Good easy eight evening. Mm, might need a bit of work, but thanks anyway. <laughs> Aloha, are we in Hawaii? Uh, great, you mean? A little bit? Yeah, yeah. No, I, do you know what? I I am doing just fine. I've had a really long couple of days. I haven't slept an awful lot. I just Sometimes I just don't sleep. It's just who I am. Uh, but for some reason, today on about three and a half hours, I'm still going strong. So yay me. If I start the flag halfway through the show, you know it's for a legitimate reason. Uh, anyway, we're not just here on YouTube. We're also on Facebook. We're also on Instagram. And we're also on Discord at the Easy Eight After Party where you can come and join me. And loads of these guys as well. If you want to, you can come and sit in a video chat with me. Uh, or if you watch, want to type, then you can do that too, whatever. Or you can just sit there and watch the rest of us if you're a little shy. That's absolutely fine too. But you can come along. You can share photos of all your stuff. Stick them on Facebook as well. Facebook's really active. Head on over there and just kind of... Talk to us about the stuff that you're working on. Maybe you've got something to celebrate. Maybe you've got some problems that you want to discuss and, you know, you can't work out how to get past it all. Come and have a chat with these guys because sometimes it's just nice to do it with a little bit of company, right? That's what this is all about. So, for the last couple of weeks, I've been working on this little miniature here. It's coming together. It's like I, we're, we're in the last few hours of me doing some stuff on it. I, I think last week I faffed a little bit. I got a bit concerned about how bright the orange was compared to previous things in the same range I've done. Uh, but it hadn't been weathered and I think that's going to that's gonna do a lot for the overall aesthetic and the vibrancy of the colours that I've been using. I've got a moustache hair up my nose and it's really... I can't deal with it. Okay, we're done. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I did like a second wash over it to uh, kind of tone it down a little bit. It sort of works, but washes take ages to dry. So, um, yeah, I think that was just kind of a bad move. But, you know, the wonders of hindsight. So now I'm, I'm literally just going to spend this evening just, just getting as much weathering as I possibly can done. I might be able to get all that done and start on some other bits and pieces. There's a few other colours that I want to kind of pick out. Um... And then, and then we're kind of getting to the point of basing. And when I've done basing, I know that the miniature's pretty much done, uh, and I can call it. I can call it quits. I would like to put some um, little transfer stickers on there, but I, I don't know what to put on it yet. And um, I'm starting the weathering process, so it's touchy ground as to you know what I can get away with. At the moment, though, I'm just enjoying putting colours on him, and that's what this is all about. Don't get lost in the you know in the detail. Have some fun painting your miniatures. That's kind of a, a little credo that I like to live by. Um, but I seldom remember when I'm actually painting. So it's your job to keep me motivated and on the right track. Stay the path. Yeah, stay the path. However, whack it into my webcam. Calamity has stricken this model. There was a little breakage on it a few weeks ago, which I repaired. And then I handled it roughly and broke it again. And I might have to start thinking a little, a little bit outside the box on how to kind of deal with that. It might take some drilling and pinning and things like that, maybe... You'll see what I mean in a minute. Anyway, if you're new here uh, or you haven't done it before, please do subscribe to the show. Every little subscription goes such a long way to making this community grow. I'm trying to think of better ways to explain that, but you know what YouTube's like. Please, 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 if you're so inclined, hit that subscribe button. It really would make my day. It genuinely, genuinely would. I feel every subscription this end. Um, so, yeah, go and tell some friends about it. Maybe you know someone at work who likes to collect and paint miniatures and would like some company. Um, just go and tell a stranger or something. Yeah, there you go. Don't talk to strangers, it's bad for you. Anyway, straight over to the workbench. Here we go. I just want to get stuck in now. Right, so, um, here we are. Here is here is my little iron strider. I'm, I just love this model. It's so cool. And I'm really enjoying painting it. I haven't got to that part yet where I'm... What happens with a lot of miniatures, and I'm sure you guys all, will all have this as well, where you've been painting it for such a long time, you're kind of getting a bit bored of it. You, you just kind of want to get rid of it now. 
I've not got to that part yet. It's I, it should it should probably have taken. I should be, I should have done it by now, basically. Um, I've got a couple of things to fix on it. There's this little black mark that I accidentally got on his cloak. Can you see that if the focus comes into play? Yeah, there it is. That's that's bothering me. It's quite noticeable now that I've noticed it. It's not weathering. There should be no weathering on his cloak, really, like all this kind of rust, because it's not rust, it's fabric, right? Um, the lenses came out really well. That was just me playing around with it. Really like that. That's. I will get better at it. I'm really happy with this. What I did is I painted them white in the middle, and then I did like a, a, a darker dot in the middle of them to make it look like the light source was not all over what i should have done is done the outside of them dark and done a bright dot in the middle to make it look like light was coming in, in the middle now it looks like he's got little pupils but i quite like that effect if the focus will come in it looks really weird doesn't it i like it it's kind of cute uh did his little eyes in his lenses up here in his, in his, in his actual face the rider's face uh, but they could probably do with a little bit more blue in them which i'll, I'll get on to for now though as you can see i started weathering on here Really happy with how that came out. Is it going to focus again? Come on now. Come on. It was focusing before I hit live. Are we, are, we going to, are we going to do it? There it is. You can see that. That's looking pretty cool. I like that. I'll put a little bit of silver in there later. Just a little bit. And um, yeah, basically I'm going to put that on this little... What did we call it last week? The, the groin... I can't remember what we called it. The pelvic region. Uh, there's another engine canning on this side. The two leg pieces that are orange and the shields. One on top of that little head thing here and one in front of the gun. And that'll be that. A few other details to pick out, but it shouldn't take me much longer after that. Um, the pipes in here, the, like these big pipes here and the ones on the back there. I've, I've been thinking about some key colours. I can't really settle on what I want to do. Do I want to do them like hoses, like black? They kind of get lost in the in the general aesthetic of it all um i've tried to highlight them i'm not very good at that and making it stand out i was thinking i could do them gray but i think they'll still be lost in with all the silver so i started thinking about using yellows now when i did my gas gold build back in october or october the yellow really stood out but he's really dark and grim dark and the yellow really stood out with the pipes on him so i was thinking about maybe um Yellow might not stand out so much in the warm colours here. And that got me thinking about using some other cooler colours, maybe. So I might do some blues or some purples or something on these just to make them stand out a little bit. Um, and we'll have the eyes here and the little overalls as the cooler colours that might contrast a little bit. So we'll see see what happens. See how I feel at the time. Um, I'm not going to worry about them right now. I just want to get some weathering done. And I'm going to put some brass in the little joints here where the little piston rams go. Because someone said to me last week, um, piston ram sockets are normally brass so do you know what I think they'll break up the silver a little bit I can see that um, someone said something about the, the silver table of horror said oh the silver work you did is really looking excellent thank you very much I really appreciate that in some areas it's a little dog-eared a uh, little rushed or a little bit ruined like on the barrels up here but whatever I don't mind that I'm particularly fond of the legs that's all worked out really really well yeah it's quite nice isn't it um some other comments going in. <clears throat> oh, Jeff joined us. Hi, Jeff. Thanks very much for coming along. Uh, staff says, put googly eyes on the end of the barrel. I told you when I get to 180 subscribers, I'll put googly eyes on this guy for you. <laughs> uh, are you sure it's cloth? It could be futuristic metal akin to aluminium foil. That's a really valid point. Yeah, I like that. I, no, I'm not sure it's not metal, uh, but I think that I'd like to keep them separated and see what it looks like. And then maybe, maybe I'll head down the whole rust element for it good shout though um give home the death glare give home the death glare give him the death glare are, are you typoing me uh what's everyone up to tonight i'm sorting out my bolt action restock says overlord games what do you mean by sorting out your 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 restock what does that mean tell me more i'm interested Table of Horror says, I finished a Rhino last night. I'm taking the night off. Oh, thanks for coming along and just joining in anyway. I really appreciate that. But you know what? That never happened unless you took photos. Stick them up on Facebook. I want to see them. Painting trees, bases, and maybe some buildings, says Kez. Brilliant. Um, how is the uh, the big dropship coming along? I heard that you've got some numbers to put on the doors. That'd be cool. And Christoulis has joined us. Happy Friday, all. Happy, happy, I was going to say happy Christmas. <laughs> happy Friday, Christoulis. It's not Christmas yet, but we should start shopping, maybe. Um, cool. Do you know what? I'm just going to get started over here. I've already mixed some brown. I've got some Vallejo Game Colour charred brown. It's my favourite brown. It's just a good all round brown, really. I put a tiny amount of flow improver in there. Uh, I'm going to keep my, my brush damp. 
and uh, all I'm going to do is just I'm not loading my brush up crazy and I'm just going to use the shape of the brush the bristles just to come in from the sides around the edges of whatever it is that I'm you know trying to paint this, this engine cowling thingy here and um, just applying little dabs at where I think that the metal work would have been worn away from the handling maybe they've been like doing some repairs taking bits off and servicing the engine maybe it's just kind of got like general contact wear and tear and things and we get like you know the the paintwork kind of gets worn away down to the metal and things and then after a while that sort of erodes away corrodes away or whatever and then you get rusty And you could say that on a desert planet like Mars, or like this is supposed to be Riser, which is very similar, that there's not enough moisture in the air for it to be, um, for it to rust like that. But I don't care. <laughs> Do what I want. Just whack the uh, webcam. So we've had a very, very busy week at work, and I've not been up here as much as I would like to have been. Um, but I have spent a little bit of time at the end of recent shows um, doing some work, sitting there chilling out with the guys on the easy after party. So I've got quite a bit done there. I'm going to add a bit of water to it, it's a bit thick. I want it to be a little bit easier to transfer. And they've got some really, really, really exciting ventures, opportunities coming up very, very soon. Some, some really big deals for, for you guys, the community. Some big deals for some partners of Easy8 and for Easy8 itself as well. Um, just some interesting things coming up. So keep your ears and eyes open and peeled looking out for future stuff. So I've, I've not been working on this guy as much as I probably should have been. not getting the um, the right sort of shape from my bristles here so I might just move to a smaller brush that was my zero I'm gonna go to my triple zero I can't remember what I was using last week but just a much smaller brush tip um, and it might kind of just give me a better dabbing pattern I like to kind of get like little um, little ellipses just like little dashes really that's too much paint on the bristles Let's take that down a little bit. Let's get some wet in there as well. Some wet bristles, please. In the back of my hand. You can't see that right now. Just, just over here. There we are. Do you know what? That's a little bit better. I thought I was using the other brush, but clearly I wasn't. And I'm just using the side of the brush. I can actually go right down to the tip of the bristles and just do little tiny dots and dabs. And I can do like little lines and I can elongate bits and pieces if I want to. So I can do tiny little dots, dashes, blobs. And just build up from something small. There's no need to go in straight away huge. And I remember when I first started doing this, I thought it was going to be... I thought it was really intimidating. It would take me forever, man. Actually, once you get into it, it's a very, very quick process. Just got to enjoy the process, really, I suppose. I have found as well that it's quite easy to go overboard, to do too much. And what's important with this piece is because it, it's got an obvious thickness to it. It's a three-dimensional shape. We've got an edge, and you can see on this side here, I'll bring it up a little bit closer, you can see that I've done weathering on the on the edge in here. But on this side here, I haven't, and it stands out like quite a sore thumb. So where I've done the weathering down there, I'm just going to come in and just introduce a little bit of this colour using the same techniques and just run it along that, that bit there.
And we're not looking at any sort of detail effort here. We're just trying to take the focus away from it. So if I hadn't have put any um, weathering on there, your eye would immediately be drawn to that area. Um, and, I, and I don't want that. I want your eye sort of taken away from it. And again, just on the inside of this little bit over here. Can I come in at the right angle? What's important is that I'm thinking about how how the bristles, if I'm using the actual shape of the bristles and kind of landing the brush down like that. So I'm thinking about the shape of the pattern. I could come in like this or I could come in like this. Um, I think that that makes, that makes quite a lot of difference. Um, some more comments going in. Um, Oh, Overlord says I've got 12 new boxes to upload on the website and 40 boxes to find space for. Yeah, yeah, man. Or just sell them. Get them out there. If anyone's interested, by the way, like Overlord does sell like a, a massive range of stuff. In mostly Second World War, so 15mm, 28mm, uh, Battlefront games, Warlord games. Go, go check out the stocks because it's really cool. There's a link just down there. Go check it. Uh, Yana says you could also put some brown wash to those bright silver parts to make some grease effect. Yeah, I did think about doing that. Um, I... Oh, I, I'm, at the moment, I'm just kind of going for a less is more effect. But maybe when I'm, when I'm done there, we'll, we'll have a little look at it. And, and you can suggest to me where it might look good. Perhaps around some of the joints and things might look really cool. You're absolutely right. Um, Staffer says, I found the stickers posted on Facebook. Thanks very much. Uh, Table of Horrors. Oh, Kez, uh, you aren't back to 100% yet still. I'm sorry, mate. I hope it passes. Oh, I missed that bit. Having a break tonight on the drop shit one. I'm still not feeling very well. Sorry to hear that you're not feeling very well. Uh, just like Table of Horror says, please do get better. Mike's joined us. Hi, Mike. Nice to see you again. Hope you're well, mate. Loads of people joining us today. Loads of projects on the go. And a little bit of sickness. Look out for yourselves, folks. There's some nasty little viruses going around. A lot of people where I work are really poorly at the moment. And there's people coming down with stomach viruses and colds and whatever. And I've just sat in the middle of it going like, uh, it hasn't noticed me yet, so touch wood doing all right. Thanks for asking. Okay, so I've gone pretty much all the way around this panel here, haven't I? Just going to make sure there's no glaringly obvious bits that <clears throat> just kind of stand out too much. Now, if I find some little transfer decal things to kind of put some iconography onto it, and I think that needs to go on after the weathering, I can always match the weathering on over the top. So what I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this weathering done now for the most part, so it's done. Then I'll probably during the intermission I'll have a quick look through all my um, my decals, choose a, a few little sigils or whatever to go on it. Um, and then I'll just kind of weather those in as, as well and be done with it. On my robots, I haven't done an awful lot of iconography. Um, I haven't done anything on my infantry, really. Um, and, and then I can just kind of match it in a little bit later. So, just like I did on the other engine cow, I'm just going to do a little bit along this. This is a really soft edge. What I mean by that is it's a curve. It's not like a stark corner. But it is an area that could receive um, like a lot of wear and tear. So I'm just gently introducing some dots and dashes and just being quite random with it. I'm just building it up, building it up, building it up. Rotating my brush a little bit as well, changing the angle a little bit as I do it. You can see that there's paint drying on the bristles, I've just cleaned it as well. Making sure that paint's not going to dry. I might put a little bit of paint retarder in there just to stop it from drying so quickly. And as I'm building up, those little dots and dashes start to change form. They stop becoming dots and dashes and they start to look like actual patina or you know general wear and tear marks and the effect comes on really really quickly if you haven't had a go at this sort of stuff give it a try because it's really quick it's really really simple just find some colors that you think are appropriate less is more build up from less you know it's easier to add more if you think that it needs it but it's harder to take it away Try and come into shot there. You see what I'm working on? Is it, is it gonna focus? Is it gonna focus? Man, I need a good camera, don't I really?
and it's really that simple. Isn't that cool? When the, when the auto focus comes into play, there you go. And remember, you're seeing it on the screen there, closer than anyone will on the on the worktop, on the worktop, on the on the t on the tabletop, and maybe on the worktop too. And if I think that some of those patterns are a little on the rough side, I can just add a little bit more. I'm going to soften it down a little bit by adding just a little bit of water into my into my bristles. And then I like to add a couple of little bits and uh, like little dots or dashes in, in areas that haven't received much attention. Just a gentle streak here, or a little line, or something, or a little scratch. Come back in with something a little darker, a little lighter. Just mix it up a little bit, like I've done on the other side here. So you can see that there's like a little line there, and a couple of little scratches or something here. Where's that autofocus? There it is. There's a little one on the top there. There's just a couple of little lines and dashes just to break it up, make it look a little bit more random. So I'm going to do maybe some just some vertical scratches. Let's get some water into my bristles. Come on, Danny. Some directional along this way like that make it look like it's been running through something yeah that's pretty cool let's get done it love it <laughs> more dagger needed says Stafford uh, out of this world models and minis hi John uh, hi everyone at work, but we'll watch the replay later. Just wanted to pop in and say hello, John. Thanks very much, John. Nice to see you again. All the way over there in the States. I hope you're doing well, mate. It's been too long since we last caught up. Looking forward to a next collab, perhaps. Okay, so that's both my little engine cowls done. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some stuff on the kind of the, the groinal area. Of, <laughs> what did we call it last week? Um see how how that looks and I'll probably do the legs and then the shields I reckon <clears throat> this is gonna be a little bit tricky because there's lots of um, angles to come in at here and it's, it's a quite a weird bizarre shape so I'm gonna start with just the obvious I'm gonna just take the harder edges here so the obvious one is, is this now, natural shading has fallen between these two hard edges, um, and what I'm going to do is I'll end up probably killing off the highlight that's there, and then taking away any of the definition. So I'm trying to be very, very careful in how I apply this. I don't want to knock that highlight out, so I just kind of want to break it up a little bit. Okay, that's a good start. I'm going in quite tentatively. I don't want to overdo it. What I'm thinking about doing, if we go back to my robots here and have a little look there, whilst I did quite a lot of this damage around the um, around the edges of these panels, I also focused quite a large area just in the middle of it as well, toning that whole colour down. I think that's kind of what I'm going to have to do on some of these parts now. So if I take this this area here this area here 
I can um, start introducing some, some weathering there. And again, I'm just dabbing and speckling and, and building up, building up, just kind of trusting the process, really. focus in on those you know soft corners hard corners a little bit more than just the uh, the flat areas it's quite it's quite difficult to try and find a, you know a zone where it looks like it needs it more than somewhere else without breaking up the highlighting in there the highlighting or the edge highlighting um, it, it's just happened through washing but it shows off the, the details, the creases and things. And unfortunately, what I'm starting to see now is the line that I've kind of made kind of follows this curve around and it just looks a little unnatural. So I'm gonna try and straighten that out a little bit. quite uneven so I'm not going to match from side to side I'm going to break it up a little bit uh, but I'll do that that side in a minute I'm going to try and just carry on the top in here and I might do quite a bit of weathering in near the sort of the torso twisty bit in there it's quite hard to see really show you guys inside there you go table of horror says YouTube has just been informed that easy eight is live thanks YouTube <laughs> I always get it as well because I, I'm a subscriber to my own show. You got to, and you got to support what you do. <laughs> so I always get a little warning. My partner does too. She doesn't watch it, but you know, it's nice to have the support in it. Not entirely sure how I feel about how that pattern effect has gone in there, but it has started to tone it all down. It is bringing a little bit of interest into there. I might break all this up later on with a little bit of silver, perhaps. Maybe I need to come in with a different shape brush. We'll see. We'll see. I've not really thought about how how that weathering would take effect on there. And where I think it would affect is quite hard to actually get in and actually see. I think that you'd end up getting quite a lot of wear and tear, like where the, the sort of hips rotate. Um, but you can't really see in there very much. So I'm just going to do just a little bit here. Oh, itchy nose. Just as I was getting into the groove. Uh, Kez says, so Catalyst Games Labs have released a, a Ruth time a Ruth a, a rough time frame on when they might release new mech designs for Battletech and my favorite mech the Madcap Mark II will not be out till second quarter 2026 that is a long time to wait maybe see if you can get yourself out on some of the uh, 3d cults or whatever uh, some of the 3d printing websites and see if anyone's made the Madcap Mark II because I know you've got a printer you could print yourself off one or two or three or a lance Thank you. 
so what I did on this side is I kind of went all the way down in one big line, didn't I? So I'm just going to bunch them up here, across the top of this circular bit. Maybe it's bum? I don't know what. Oh, don't drop it. <laughs> Whatever this little circular effort is here. Try to make it look like some wear and tear on there. Look. And then I'm just going to do a big patch down here. I think I'm gonna to need to do here is get some more brown in there and add a little bit of retarded medium because I think this paint is drying a little too fast. Tell you what, the paint's not coming out of the ruddy pot. Maybe get yourself a, a fave, a new fave to tide you over. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. Um, do you know what, I should stop reading the bottom comment all the time and then working my way back up. Kez is saying I would have printed my own and just would like an official one. Yeah, for sure. Um, and do you know what, there's, there's some value in what Mike's saying as well, isn't there? Maybe it's time for a new fave. Um, I don't think you can ever have one ultimate favorite. There's always gonna be like the groups that you, that you like, isn't there? Um, what can you do, eh? That's a long old waiting time though, isn't it? Okay, there's a little bit of painting by paint retarder. Um, it is like a bit of a jelly, it's a weird stuff this paint retarder. Not a massive fan, but it does have a massive effect, it really will slow down that drying. Add a little bit of water there. And then back to the, the three zero. What's got a nicer consistency that has? Okay, where were we? In this little pelvis region place. The place where the sun don't shine. Advice, please, guys. Uh, Stafford gluing clear canopies on. Uh, do I use super glue or poly cement? Neither. They will both completely frost up all of your clear plastics. Get yourself some PVA glue and glue them on with white glue. Just the fumes that come from super glue or cyan or acrylate of any kind um, will be enough to frost up irreparably all of your canopies. Um, and if you smear it with um, poly cement even remotely too much, it will do a very similar thing. Um, so yeah, I strongly recommend white glue. I used white glue on the canopy for my um, uh, Space Marines gunship, I can't remember what it's called now. I did two of them and it worked really well.
I'm finding that just kind of tracing along beside the edge highlight is enough to bring some interesting um, weathering to this area rather than do little dots and lines all the time just the tiniest thin line just along the side of the highlight means that it's also not losing that highlight as well which is something that I really don't want to do Uh, Mod Podge, Adrian told me it does not yellow over time. Yeah, any kind of wood glue, any sort of white glue will, will do exactly the same thing. Wood glue stuff, not being funny, but wood glue a hold and don't mist up uh, the clear plastic. Yeah. Yeah, I think I just use normal, like, poster PVA stuff, you know, cheap stuff from the supermarket, did the job. So I think I've gone a bit overboard with the old uh, weathering down here, but never mind. It is what it is. And again, with that little circle hidden behind these hoses here, it's a thickness, isn't it? And, and I'm doing some weathering on the sides of it here, where it probably would be handled, whether it'd be like a little, I don't know, fuel thing. Um, it's, uh, it needs weathering on, on this outwards facing edge too. said I wasn't going to do that all the way down but actually it looks alright like that. A little bit on the heavy side but what can you do?
Okay, here comes him with the really tricky bits now. And he's trying to get in and around and behind these limbs here and still make the weathering look convincing, I suppose. So just trying to take out some of the corners and some of the edges. And at the same time, it should just soften down that amount of orange or the brightness of the orange that's in, hidden in these areas here. As long as I don't go completely ridiculous with this, it should be an effect that just is sort of almost lost to the eye, really. There we go. That's, that's looking okay. It's a bit messy, but I've got, I got some plans on how to kind of tidy up a little bit. I think about, I'll probably come back later on with a, almost like a, a thick brown wash and just kind of wash it over the areas of the brown weathering where it looks a little bit, I don't know, patchy and that might just sort of tie it together a little bit. Um, yes, yeah, that's saying thanks guy, saved me a lot of regret there. PVA for the win. Yeah, honestly, um, I remember when I was looking I'd heard somewhere, or maybe I'd remembered from some sort of childhood trauma, that those glues, poly cement, and super glue, fog up your clear plastics. So I went looking um, online for it, and someone suggested just PVA glue, and I remember just like, yeah, this this is, it, it's not as strong because it doesn't create such a tight bond of super glue. It certainly doesn't weld surfaces together like poly cement will. Um, but as long as you get like a good dollop in there and a good and a good even coverage all the way through. Push it on, hold some pressure on there, leave it for a while, it, it will do the job. to use my paintbrush here at full extension I'm holding it right from the back just so I can get in over the base and get my paintbrush right in in some of the really hard to reach areas <laughs> it's really difficult trying to control the brush at that sort of length but it, is, it works it works really awkward spot to get the brush in and actually make the weathering look as good as it did on those two engine curlings. So I'm just trying to just do a job that doesn't attract the eye and attracting it for either reason, you know, looking really good like weathering or, or not enough weathering, as long as it just looks like it's been completed. So I'm just trying to soften up the edges of the, the colour panels, basically. It's just a lot harder than you think it might be.
because this brush is really small, it doesn't hold an awful lot of paint, so I have to keep on going back and refilling my, my bristles here, but I'll do what I can do. Out of interest, does anyone else paint the stuff on the sprue before assembly, or am I just really old? It says Table of Horrors. Um, is that is that like a old school thing to do? I know that there was like a little trend of people painting um, like not rare finds, but like the like the um, limited edition offers and things. Doing um, painting them on the sprue and then putting them in like a little. Um, a little mince box or something you know but no I I I remember doing it as a kid wondering if it was a faster way of doing it but then knowing that I've got to clip them off the sprue and then damage the paintwork and then like removing mold lines and cleaning up rough areas or whatever will just I'm just double doing the work you know I'd rather build it into sub assemblies and then kind of paint sub assemblies from there really just need to do a little bit under these hips here on the bottom side of it and then I'm on to legs and shields and I'm hoping that they're going to be easier. This whole pelvis region has been very very frustrating and I'll probably end up having to come back to it time and time again just to sort of perfect the look that I had definitely haven't got it in my head and I think that's being a bit of a part of the problem. Okay, let's try. Oh, <laughs> just throw it across the table. A lot of the problem here, I, th I think, is coming from the fact that the way that the um, that the wash has settled onto these air into these like kind of flat areas. You can see here, for example that there's been like a little bit of pooling in the middle of this square leaving the edges quite brighter and then obviously where the where the wash is kind of settled it's left it darker but I'm making the trying to make the panels lighter in the middle and then using weathering to darken out the edges the creases and things and that's just ended up you know hiding all of the orange which um is something that I definitely need to bear in mind in, in future paint jobs I'm being quite quick and rough and ready with this. Oh, look, I've missed a bit on the underside of this cowling. I need to get that thick edge there. I was being quite fast on the underside there just because you're not really ever going to see underneath it unless you're lifting a skirt. And, um, well, I don't allow that sort of abuse on my miniatures. This is a safe space. Yeah, 
I don't really like what I've done here and here. I'll see if I can correct that later. Uh, just making sure I come at it from all angles. Just a few bits in here that I want to just revisit. Yeah, that's a bit better. Just trying to get the, the corner edge of this circle. There we go. Just try and neaten up this little passion here and make it look not so rubbish. Trying to make it look like it's not just kind of tracing the outside of that circle. All I'm doing is bringing this patch here up a little bit. And that does block that off a little bit. That's good. That makes me feel much better. Okay. Okay, that's better. Uh, and then very quickly, just before we go to break, I'm just going to do the underside of that engine cowling there. Which I say it's got a thickness to it. If I flip him upside down now, you can see just here, look, that big orange stripe basically that runs along here. I'm just going to take to the outer edge of that. There we go. And now it's starting to look a little bit more worn down, which is really cool. A bit too heavy on the inside of the pelvis region in there, but I just didn't know how to tackle that at all. Can introduce a little bit of silver into this weathering later on, you know, and it will hopefully make it look much better. Cool, so now I want to start thinking about how to apply onto these um, these leg pieces. And with these leg pieces, just like this corner here on these engine cows, these are just one continual soft corner. So it might be that I just kind of get like a, a weathering effect here and maybe a little bit on the inside. So I'm just going to try and do like central patches and just generally leave these. It's going to be quite difficult to do. I don't want to do too much on the edges because these big trim bits here are actually going to protect it from wear and tear on the edges. So it's just going to basically be like along this area here. There we go. Anyway. Uh, we should probably be getting ready for break because it's that time already. <sighs> like Table of Horror said last week, some time just flies when you're just cruising along and having some fun, right? Um, let's, do, re let's go back and revisit some of the comments that we were getting here. Uh, Kez says that they've never done that thing with a sprue. No, like I say, like I remember playing with it, but just I remember like taking all the bits off and handling it and all the paint coming off my fingers anyway. Uh, Table of Horror says, when I was 12, I was constantly told off by others for assembling before painting. What? Crazy. I find it way hard to paint an assembled mini now. Harder. Really? Like, when when the whole thing's painted, you can't... Uh, it's crazy, man. Do you know what? I'd love to see a video of you putting something together and painting it pre-painted. That that would be insane to see. Uh, Stafford says, I leave it till the last possible thing. I hate painting. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I like to build as much as much of the model as possible as I can before painting says cares yep yeah me too I have kind of done that with some things built smaller parts out first did you bend and break its spurs when you dropped it yes yeah I said at the beginning didn't I there was a calamity so if you look in the little small screen now you'll see that um, this leg here I was handling it and the thing just popped off um, it was held in with super glue and not um, 
plastic glue, like you know, poly cement, because the poly cement takes so long for it to, to actually hold that by the time it's glued in place, it's just going to bend down and just look all wilted and droopy. So what I was thinking that I could do is just cut that bit off there, drill a hole, and then slot this into it. It might look a little bit naff. I could also try and pin it with something. It's a very tiny area to pin, um, but I do love a little challenge. Ultimately, though, I don't want a ruddy challenge. I just want it fixed. Um, and I could just cut it off, I suppose. I don't want to just cut it off, though, you know? Like, I want it to be on. But it is very delicate. That's why I broke in the first place, I suppose. It was just in the box with all the other goodies. Um, anyway, look, I'm just going to sip some water here because I've got a bit of a dry mouth from talking so much. Yum, yum, yum. See my moustache. <laughs> Table of Horror says some Tamiya black panel line would look uh, on that gold trim would look pucker. What def separating it from the orange, so like between the orange and the and the gold trim, or more like on the trim itself, kind of affecting the colour of the gold. What what sort of thing do you mean? Oh, I have some old Mark Threes I'm working on that I can do a video of putting them together pre-painted. It's really satisfying watching it come together. I'd love to see that. That'd be cool watching that, says Kez. Yeah, right. Uh, that'd be brilliant. Stick out on Facebook if you want to. Or if you've got your own YouTube channel, just like post a link or something. I'd love to see it. It'd be great. Like, like I always say, like I'm, I'm genuinely in, in, inspired by the works that you guys do, which is why I, I like you to share your stuff with me um, and everybody else, because it's really valuable to, uh, stuff to see. Um, anyway, look, it's, it's that time, and uh, I want to kind of carry on um, getting all this work done. It's going really well. Have I got paint in my water? Don't don't drink your paint water. Um, I, I, it's, it's coming on. I want to try and get as much of this brown uh, painting done today, and maybe some else, you know, other bits as well. So um, yeah, I'm just going to try and crack on. I think um, between the gold trim. Oh, okay, yeah. Do you know what? I've got similar things. I've got similar things that I can do. There's more bits and pieces to do uh, between now and then, but yeah, we'll, we'll get there, I think. Yeah, okay, I'll give it a try. Anyway, look, uh, I'll be back in a minute. Uh, go change paint water. Don't drink it. See you in a bit. Did you notice that we didn't cut to music there? That's a bit weird. We're having a technical problem here. Let's try it again. Let's see what happens. We are having a technical problem today. My jazz set is not coming through. Uh, what happens if I push this button? There it is. See you in a bit. Go change pink water. Bye bye.
and welcome back. Now uh, we got past a little technical issue. Don't know why it happened. My little mute button was on for my jazz music and I've just just lessened the quality of the whole show. So sorry. Um, anyway, look, I didn't change my paint water, but I did a thing. I went and got a grown-up juice. So uh, cheers. Happy weekend, everybody. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yum. It has come out of a tin, actually, so I'm not very happy with that, but it was free. It was given to me by my partner. Thanks very much, mate. So just before we went to break, Safin was asking, does clear varnish react with the canopies? Um, not the varnish itself. It depends on the medium that the varnish is being held in and how you apply it. If you were to uh, spray varnish, it probably will because the propellant um, and, and the, all the other chemicals that are in that tin to pressurize it will probably have some some sort of a reaction with it. So I, I would be quite weary about using spray varnish on your canopies. What you could do is not glue the canopy on, or if you've already done that, it's only white glue, it should just pull off. Um, spray varnish the whole thing and then apply your canopy. Excuse me, with my storm talons, that's what they're called, uh, my little space marine flyers, it's exactly what I did. In fact, you know what, I thought it was on the shelf behind me, but it's actually right beside me. Let me wash my brush out. Here we go. Um, a little bit dusty because he's been sat there just kind of collecting cobwebs. I'll show him on the overhead camera just a second, but you can see uh, that the, you've got the shininess of the, of, the, of the cockpit, the canopy there. And that's just held in with, with white glue. But before I sprayed varnish all over him, and he did get a heavy douse of varnish because he's got decals on him. Oops. Um, is that I just left the canopy off, sprayed him with all the varnish, and that did come out of a spray tin that particular, that particular time. And then I got some white glue, glued the canopy on, um, and that's how it came out. It came out really, really well. And I'll, I'll show you ever so quickly in just a second. Uh, not to forget, though, if you are new here or you're just joining us for the first time, please don't forget to subscribe. Um, the subscriptions really make the channel grow. In fact, they are the metric by which this show grows. And if you get me to 180 subscribers, I'll stick some googly eyes on the little model that I've been making because people keep thinking that googly eyes would make it look cool. They probably would. I uh, no spoilers. I haven't checked it out yet. Googly eyes make everything better. Um, if you give me to 200 subscribers, uh, then I'll bring my cats into the studio and they'll destroy everything live on the stream because that's what we want in it. 200 subscribers. Go do it. Mm -mm -mm. Um, Table of Horror says, is there anything that I can use to clear glue mist off the plastic stands? That is a good question. And I'm probably going to go with not as good as it ever looked originally. Um, so the easiest way to do it is to basically remove whatever's on there. And it depends how it has happened. So, for example, if you've, if you've got... Um, P uh, sorry, not PVA glue. If you've got super glue or cyanoacrylate on there, um, it may have just affected the surface and you might be able to scrape that off. If it's poly cement, it has probably melted the surface because... Basically, pl the plastics that we use is a very, very similar product to what polystyrene is. And we've all, we all know what happens if you pour poly cement onto polystyrene. It just melts it straight away. And it's doing that on a smaller degree um, so that you can put the sh push the two surfaces together and they essentially, essentially weld together. Um, so it's going to be much harder to recover that surface. I have never been in a situation where I've been able to recover clear plastic from it fogging up the easiest way to do it would be to remove what you can off the surface so if you've got lumpy bumpy terrain try to even that out and then it might just be like micro sanding so basically starting off with a fine gray sandpaper and then working your way down to 3,000 4,000 grit sand it's a lot of work for a little clear base if you're looking at um, like little GW bases like these things here you're probably better off chopping it off and buying some new ones frankly for the amount of effort that you're going to do which is why it's so annoying and frustrating when you get it on your cockpits because um well it's you can't uh so a lot of people not everyone of course but a lot of people uh, resort to just painting their cockpits and i think that looks really trendy as well anyway subscribe it would really make my day it, it really would please do uh, at least consider it or pass it off to a friend anyway to the bench here we go to the bench that wasn't a technical problem, that was a monkey problem. I didn't push the button. Um, like here's my cockpit. You can see that the model itself is really, really dusty. You can see the little dude inside. You can see all his little buttons on his console and whatever. Um, and I, I sprayed varnish this whole this whole beast. And um, yeah, 
I didn't spray varnish the uh, the cockpit. It's a little bit dirty, I wonder. Did I give it a bit of a wash? Let's get a bit of just water on there. Go for the car wash. Just needs a clean lip. Oh, grimy. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I, I when I used to play Warhammer 40,000, I haven't played it for a long time. Um, I used to play Space Marines a lot, and I used to get a lot of use out of this particular model. Uh, I love flyers. Some grime stuck right up in the corners of that cockpit there. Yeah, this is just dust. It's been sat on a shelf for ages. There we go. It's come out a little bit cleaner. That has. Um, yeah, it's just. Just, just white glue, just white glue. Uh, but I didn't spray varnish on it. If I sprayed varnish on that like, little clear plastic base over there, it would probably ruin it. I don't know what it's like coming out of an airbrush. I would say that because you are basically applying, um, you're applying a paint to it, it's gonna have, it's gonna have a matte finish. So therefore, it's gonna destroy what you can see through. So I'd stay clear of it personally. And that wasn't a play on words. It was just a happy coincidence. Cool, here we go. Enter stage right. We have a new subscriber live on the show. This so rarely happens, but Marcel Williams has subscribed. Marcel, if you're watching right now and that's not a delayed reaction from my software, which is sometimes the case, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for subscribing. It's really made my day. Um, we're such a small show here that it rarely happens live on stream and that's that's really nice that it has happened so thank you very much go get yourself a grown-up juice and come and join the rest of us mm -mm 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 -mm. um some strong words coming in from yana right there <laughs> those gw clear bases are just one big cancer make your own instead interesting that you said that of course because when i was painting my tyranid gargoyles a little while ago I still haven't put them on bases, but I was playing around in the studio about a week ago. Um, here are some uh, very long acrylic um, stands that I got from Green Stuff World. Uh, what I did is I just cut off the, the flight stand bit that was on there that snapped, uh, drilled a hole and stuck this in there. Um, I will then glue this in. You can see already that um, where I was kind of like filing away that it's affected the, the base where it goes into it. Uh, that'll be a super glue effort. I'm actually going to paint the base, I think, uh, rather than leaving it clear, um, just because I think it'll be nice. I'm not sure yet. And I'll cut this down to where I want it to be, and I'll put a little bit of super glue um, in the inside the Tyranid, and then shove this inside it, basically. Uh, the super glue is what is needed because these are acrylic, and I don't think acrylic uh, takes well to um, poly cement. It doesn't do the same thing. Um, so it needs to have a cyanoacrylate inside to bond it. Uh, but yes, you can get you can get this um, you can get this material. You can get clear plastic bases. Um, yes, I while I don't agree so strongly with what Yana is saying, um, there, there are ways around it. Basically, I do prefer the black plastic ones. Whatever takes your fancy. It's a little bit of something for everyone, isn't there? But yes, clear plastic is not easy to work with. Anyway. Back to this guy. Uh, Table of Horror says, Huh, I never considered making my own. That would be worth at least looking into. Thanks, man. What are you, what are you making him for? What, what, what is it going on to? Is, is my question, I suppose. Um, here is some damage I've done on this leg here. Trying to not take away too much of the wonderful colour effect that is on there. Uh, I just thought I'd do some sort of like lengthy scar. What I'm going to try and do is break it up and make it not look like it's all been stitched on because where I've where I've patterned it on, patterned it, you know what I mean, where I've dappled, you can see an effect and it looks like a stitch mark basically. So what I'm going to try and do is just come in from a slightly different angle and just go over the same area and by going at a different angle, 90 degrees to my previous pattern, it stops it from looking like but, 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 all the way down because it just looked like a series of lines all beside each other. And it should help to make it look, or at least in my head anyway, make it look a little bit more natural. Despite the paint retarder, the paint is drying in the palette, but I didn't want to add too much anyway because well, I don't want it to, to not dry, right? 
uh, a little bit over here. Just trying to make sure that I'm actually in the um, in the shot. There we go. That looks kind of cool, right? Nice. Obviously, I want to try and get a bit on the inside of the thigh in there to make it not look uneven. So I'm going to try and do that now. But of course, what I need to do is get some more brown paint. Um, an Anvilus Dreadclaw Drop Pod. Ah. Uh... Uh, I'm gonna need to see a photo of that. I'd love to see it. Stick it up on Facebook if you're so inclined. You've got the time, got the stuff to do that with. I'd love to see it. Is that is that in 28 mil? Is that for Warhammer or, or like Horus Heresy, or is that in like the smaller scales, so like Titanicus or whatever? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I know. Uh, yeah, Yana says, uh, yeah, those GW sticks are just very brittle. Yeah, no kidding either. Like I actually had to saw the other one off. So. Here's one for example. I've got a plastic saw um, to saw it off because these things are so brittle. They're really, really hard. And I've got some really expensive clippers from uh, Redgrass Games. Beautiful clippers live on stream. I was just saying how good they are. Uh, as I said it, snapped the end right off one side. And that was trying to cut um, one of these things off. Pow. Don't do it. Saw them. It, yeah, absolutely beside myself. Very expensive clippers. Very, very good clippers. Um, yikes. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Horace Heresy Scale. I'll stick a photo in Discord. Yeah, and Joe, I'd love that. That'd be great. Thank you very much. I'm sure my brown's got a block in it. There's, there's no way I've ran out of this brown. This is where I spray it everywhere, right? Don't do it, man. Don't do not do that. Right. Okay. Oh, no. Maybe it's not blocked. Maybe I have actually just run out. That's very sad. Okay. have to give it a good whack. It is very sad that Dreadclaw is now legend. <laughs> That's tool abuse. Yeah, man. It really was. It's it's on one of the... I don't know what episode it's on. I was doing Tyranids. Oh, I have run out of brown. Could you add him and eave it? Right. Well, I don't have any more of this brush on brown, so I'm going to have to use my um, airbrush brown, and unfortunately, it's not as solid so it's a little bit more time consuming to work with but at least I've got the same pigment that's the most important thing I can work with this okay I still have to worry about watering it down okay uh, Lindstrom flush cut clippers for the win um, I will keep my eye out for those Mike thanks very much So I'm just going to try and get on the inside of this thigh in here. I'm just going to do like a, like a little patch or something, I think. The idea here is to make it look like there's just wear and tear on areas where it would be easiest for wear and tear to happen. Now if you imagine that obviously these brass pieces, this filigree or this edging, this trim, would be raised slightly so you wouldn't get as much sort of abrasion right up against them because whatever's touching them, pushing up against them, is going to be kind of touching the, the bare bits in the middle. But I'm trying to also m not make it so that all the orange is gone. I'm, I'm trying to make it so that the orange is kind of like the dominant feature here. 
with some weathering on top. And I quite like that look, actually. That's that's quite nice. If I'm looking at it like that, I might try and take it up a little bit further in there. That looks alright, doesn't it? Looks okay. Might do something a little bit bolder, right down the bottom on the inside there. Because that almost looks like a motif that's sort of drawn on them and I don't really want that. So what I might try and do is just create some difference um, down the bottom here. Because it, it just looks like it goes kind of starts off broad at the top and then works its way down to narrow pattern that is. Will it focus? Will it focus? Come on. It almost looks like a motif or like a design or something. So if I just try and do a little bit more down here, take some emphasis away from the fact that it looks like brown lightning. <laughs> terrible on the inside but you know okay something here now uh, posted her in finished projects I'd love to have a look thank you very much just cut the top off cut what top off I'll cut the top off my clippers no thanks <laughs> Uh, Mike says that they are the brand tool of choice on an aircraft production line. Uh, they can take serious abuse and can be resharpened. Not that I've had to yet. Okay, cool. Lindstrom. Lindstrom. I'll try and remember that. Using the fact that there's not an awful lot of paint on my brush just to start this kind of patterning off. You can barely see it on the camera there, I think. But it's just kind of leaving behind some little dabs and dobs and you know dots and things and I'm just kind of just just moving the paintbrush up and down and I'm um, just sort of letting it happen naturally and where it starts to build up is where I'm gonna concentrate my efforts and go like, oh, okay cool there then just now wiping almost an almost dry brush across it and go like, okay cool so we're gonna have some weathering here I'll cut the top off the paint tube. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Do you know what? Sometimes, because there's such a delay between, like, you know, chats and you guys painting your thing and me painting my thing, sometimes I, I lose complete connection to the conversation. I don't need to. It's a removable top, and I, I will sort it out later on. But, you know, right now, I'm just 
having fun painting and trying to make sure that you guys, for the very short period of time that we're together, kind of get to see what it is that I'm doing. I know you're painting your own stuff generally, but, you know, it's nice to be able to see it happen, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? That I, I might actually do that because that looks pretty poor, and that is because the paint, being an airbrush paint, it sort of it's too fluid and it just it moves around too easy. So um, yeah, very very bunny. Right, let me just clean the top of this lid off. So if I just get a bit of cotton wool on here, that just stops me from spreading around muck, and I'm going to take this thing off. Just for ease, got some pliers. There we go, look at that. I'm gonna use my um, crappy brush here, because it doesn't matter if I kind of ruin it by getting some paint on it. Oh, that is pretty empty. Okay, we've got a little something there. Yeah, okay, cool. Very runny, it's like the medium is, is. Yeah. Doesn't mix very well. Uh, I'll just pop that lid back on. Don't forget that. Funnel is off. Very, it's almost like the same paint I was just using. I'll have to order some new one, some new paint. Because with a thicker paint, you can there's a texture you can you know, you can you can use the texture to your advantage and make it you know you can use it as a pattern and it it kind of it behaves much more different differently. Or uh, every week, I think I say that. Not my best weathering, that looks a little artificial, not really into that at all. Do you know sometimes you do something and you're just like, that, that is, that's awful. Uh, losing connection, the best thing in painting. Don't know what you mean. If I said something, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Maybe I'll change that later. Uh, still got some weathering to do on the shield on the front here. The general aesthetic is is starting to be, you know, affected, and that's that's kind of cool. I like that. Um, oh, just lose yourself, right? Yeah, okay. I just lose the connection, man. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do like coming into the studio sometimes. It's just me in the house or something. I just, I just switch off for hours. You know, I, I do that occasionally. Vibe, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Niels Baptist. Sorry, I actually saw your logo and assumed it was someone else. I didn't read your name. Um, Niels Baptist is not a name that I often see in the live chat, um, if at all. Uh, so if you're a, a new subscriber or a new viewer, welcome to the show. Um, I hope you find something of, of value here i hope you find some entertainment i hope you find some company i hope you find some motivation that's what it's all about and do you know what inspiration i'm inspired by all of your all of your works and sorry for thinking that you're someone else um but yeah you're absolutely right just uh, just nice to kind of 
disconnect from you know the day from the world from your job whatever it is just come in and carve yourself out a little bit of time and that's what this show is all about you know it's just for me I mean I, I could paint any time I suppose but it means that I've, if I've got a show to to do you know I'm entertaining other people I'm kind of bringing people together and that's a nice thing that is something that is something nice to do be the reason that people come together but it means I get to carve out a couple of hours at least every week and that's that's really nice just to be like I'm gonna go do my thing and not care what anybody says and I'm going to try and go quite light on the weathering on this shield here that's facing forwards. It would it would just be, if anything, it would just be sort of taking forwards damage, probably from from you know like fire, I suppose. And um, it's all very narrow areas. It's very hard, you know, at the scale here to kind of make it look like that it's received lots of shots and stuff at my skill level anyway. So I'm just going to do like little patches and just see where it kind of takes me. And I'm not going to overdo it. Less is more, right? There's some detail on there that if I start painting dark paints on, it kind of loses it. If I can bring that into focus. Is it, is it going to do it? Is it going to do it? Are you going to, are you going to, oh, do you know what? This autofocus is doing my head in. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm just literally just putting patches on and, and hopefully it just adds a little something to it. Uh, Niels is saying, no, true, I, I found it offered by YouTube. That That is absolutely excellent to know. That means that the show is out there. It means that the people that subscribe and, and, and affect the algorithm, all hail the algorithm, um, are having an effect just in the general sort of hobby community means that easy eight is, is out there so welcome to the welcome to the fold um i don't know why i said that i don't even know what that means i just heard it in a movie once <laughs> uh, welcome to the fold and um yeah the more people comment on the videos the more people thumbs up the videos uh that you talk in the live chat i think uh, certainly subscriptions everything affects that algorithm and, and kind of puts it out there all hail the algorithm so yeah if you if you haven't you know liked the video by thumbs up uh, if you haven't left a comment leave a comment every week just, just down the bottom just say that you were here um and it, and it gets it out there Does that does that, good, does that look good or does that look rubbish? I I think that looks pretty naff if I'm honest. What does everybody else think? I think that I think it's probably some of the worst painting I've I've ever done. Love supporting small streamers. Thank you very much. I I genuinely really appreciate it. So thank you very much for coming along and saying that. What does everybody think about that on that shield? I I, I think that's awful. <laughs> I, I genuinely think that's. I don't swear on the show because it's for families as well. But that insert whatever swear word you want right there. That's um. That's naff, that is, isn't it? Uh, what I'm going to do uh, on the little machine head thing, uh, the little cybernetic head there, is I'm just going to do that sort of soft edges weathering. What I did here on this cowling, that, that, that is brilliant. I really like that. That really works for me. Yeah. And I've done that sort of stuff before. So what I'm going to do on this little robot head here is just along this soft edge here. It's just a tiny amount of weathering. Just like that. 
change direction a little bit with the brush so it makes it look a little more random. Yeah, that's all right, that is. See, that, that's that's okay. That's small, that's subtle, and, and sort of realistic. Add, add a couple of extra sort of points or, you know, lines or something in there. It's an area that would be affected. Cool. Change sides. Again, just like this soft edge here. Bring it in so that, that soft edge is not a corner, is it? It's just like a, a raised area that could get roughed up on just, just along the edge of my thumb tip there. And I'm going to do that now along this little bit here. That looks pretty cool. So I've got, I've got a situation. Um, that looks pretty poor. Um, and then on that shield, that that's shocking, frankly. So what I might try and do is just sort of break it up a little bit. Maybe take it up to the uh, the the trim, the gold trim areas, just so it stops it looking like it's just blob in the middle of that orange. It looks completely unnatural. Um, and I might be able to try and change it a little bit. So if I just took it up to the edge here. a little bit better but it still looks very very scrappy and rough um, some more comments going in painting is good help you forget the madness in the real world create while the world burns yeah do you know creativity is the greatest gift of man um, I don't have children so I can get away with saying things like that um, and when I say man I mean everybody um, so yeah to have creativity to have a and what what makes a good artist is being able to convey what's up here translating it into the physical real world so there is no good or bad artists in the quality of what you do it's about being able to convey your own mental image up here um, and you can only do that by by practice and actually making it and I, and I think that's that's incredible stuff um, Overlord says when are you starting the easy eight patreon um, when I have enough followers then it feels like something that I could do if you don't think that I haven't thought of something like that you'd be very wrong I thought about all of the things uh, but I want to make sure that we've got a community that is self-sustaining and, and, and grows naturally beyond just on the live stream um, so yeah and, 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 and what do I do how, how does that become a thing I don't know like I'm not a, I'm not good enough to be um, a, a painting tutor or even a painting service uh, we are we are just all all of the same thing man we're, we're, we're just people who enjoy the hobby come together and I, and I say this almost every week now it is it is lovely to be the reason that people come together and what a wonderful thing to come together over a hobby that we all share a love for um, I'm not here to tell you how to do that just to kind of help you find the time to do it with friends or make new friends doing it um, how do I make that a Patreon thing? How do I make that? Uh, how do I make that my job? You've got some really good big competition for <laughs> for it to turn into my job because I'm one of those gits that's got a really good job that I love doing. So to take me away from that's got to be a big thing. It doesn't mean that I'm ever going to stop doing what I do. I won't. I love it. Um, <laughs> I mean, <it's laughs> I'm trying to read that out, but I'm giggling. Uh, Table of Horror says, you mean a, a Patreon? It, yes, that's good. <laughs> I love that. 
Where did you get the clear rods from? Uh, so staff, I got them from Green Stuff World. If you want, I can send you a link or I can put it up on Facebook if you want. Green Stuff World make a lot of good stuff. Um, I hear 50-50, don't like their stuff, uh, do like their stuff. And from what I understand, people don't like their stuff is because of like a business decision some time ago that put someone else out of um, out of pocket I think and I don't know an awful lot about that but if that sort of thing bothers you go and research that but they do make a lot of good products um, rods are us <laughs> oh, okay we're descending now okay brilliant Sh short fantastic uh, Crumb Studio, another name that I don't recognise. We've got more people coming in. Um, thank you so much for coming along to this show. It's it's really suddenly taking off this evening. Thank you so much for coming along and being a part of this community. Uh, could sponging on a touch of silver onto the shield work instead? Yes, um, and because you haven't seen it, I've, I've had them out a couple of times already uh, today. Here are some robots that I've done in the same colour, and if I bring these into the focus, you can see um, that when I was kind of doing w w working out what this style was going to be you can see that like for this armor panel here let me point with a paintbrush uh, this armor panel here for example is where I first started um, I just went, went down all the way along basically doing edge low lighting so turning this edge into a burnished you know weathered edge and if you look very carefully in all these patches you can see tiny amounts of silver in there as well depending on how big that damage is and the sort of effect that I was going for example here on the shoulder you can see that there's very little brown in there and I've actually gone right through to bare metal I will be doing the same thing with this model as well I just haven't got to it yet and all the way around in some places I went over the top with it I was really experimental on the backs of the legs there's some wonderful shapes on these robots I absolutely love doing these I've still got two more to do uh, but all these soft edges what I mean by a soft edge if you look on the side profile of a, of a piece of metal or uh, something um, you can you'll have like a, a hard edge like a right angle that comes together and this edge where the fingertips are is, is a hard edge right is, is a pointy surface where lots of weathering could happen but a softer edge would be like maybe that that incline kind of reduces and the, sh and the shear drops and it turns into a more rounded edge you're still going to have a lot of um, sort of abrasion I suppose possibly happening on that area a lot of sort of rubbing against objects or handling or whatever that might wear the paint away so where you can see on the legs here like going down the sides here these are all soft edges but there's some very noticeable soft edges on them I don't know why I over, over pronounced that but <laughs> over soft edges and on the ankles here and it was just an area for me to introduce a little bit of you know sort of areas of interest to kind of catch the eye bring it in there and go like oh that looks really cool and you can see what I did on that on the arms or the, the fists is I imagine this thing like smashing through walls like Robocop and you know smashing things on the other side of it and not worrying about the object that's punching through well that's going to take its toll isn't it and so I kind of created these directional lines of wear and tear all the way up to the shoulders um, but the brown wasn't showing up on the red so I just went straight to straight to silver on them um, so yes, in short, <laughs> TLDR, um, I will be bringing silver onto this as well. I just don't think I've done a very good job on here, and that is sad. <laughs> these soft corners, these soft edges here are so much rounder that if I'd done that all the way along, most of this like the thigh piece would be brown and I'd lose that wonderful colour. And there's some wonderful patina on there as well, just where the washes have kind of gone. I've already lost a little bit of that. This side here, rubbish, don't like that at all. What's on the shield? Crap. So, yeah, it happens. It's a learning process. I'm not going to get too caught up in it. I'm not going to get too wound up. I'm just going to, hopefully, the silver will bring something more to it. Um, and I'm all for that process. Trust the process, right? You've got to see it through. And I noticed that, despite me even zooming in a little bit, my autofocus just will not play today. Um, for those of you that are interested, I am looking at getting a proper mirrorless uh, DLSR um, with lots of figures for the costing to try and bring to you the best viewing pleasure of the poor works that I paint. Um, obviously, it's, I, I'm a working man. Uh, this is a hobby um, and it just takes a little bit of money gathering. So bear with me while I sort that out, but I do want you to be able to have the best viewing experience this is just a webcam this is a uh, logitech cr90 It's a very good webcam uh, arguably the best webcam on the market at the moment but it's not designed for this sort of thing so um it doesn't have a very fast reaction time for auto zoom 
because it's designed for that sort of thing, um, as where like cameras are. So get a good one. I will. <laughs> That's that story done with, really. Um, can you go back over with spots of orange, almost paint the flakes effect? Yeah, I could do. I suppose I don't know what I um how that would look uh, because the orange that you see has been uh, filtered with washes. If I paint orange directly on top, it'll probably take some effort to go back. I'd rather just make the mistake um, and just keep on going and see what happens. I mean, it, it looks all right. It's just... It's not a bad paint job. I just failed in being able to try to translate what's here onto the canvas of my model, really, haven't I? Um... <laughs> Overlord says, I'd sub. What, sub to sub to the Patreon? I love that, by the way. That is really good wordplay. Um, don't. Community is the good thing. Okay, cool. I won't. I love it. I love doing what I do here. I, I want, you know, like, Easy 8 was born from... You know, it, dur during the pandemic um, and I wanted to bring my friends together and, and people together because um, let's be honest none of us really knew how long lockdown was going to last uh, and frankly a lot of me and my friends were very concerned and worried we didn't know what was going to happen uh, so I wanted to bring everyone together and after lockdown I was going to stop doing it because you know it felt like it had served its purpose run its course and Everything was very temporary in the studio. I was in a different room back then. And um, I felt like, you know, I was an amateur and I didn't really have much of a place of doing it all the time. Um, and I was inundated with messages saying, please don't, my mental health will fall apart. And that's, while that has a serious backstory, I suppose, is a beautiful thing to be told. So I carried on. Why not, right? Mm -mm -mm. Grown-up juice. Um... Crumb Studio says, recent sub after being recommended uh, as I'm looking for painting painting long form. Interesting word. What do you mean by painting long form? What does what, what does that mean? Uh, what do you mean by it? Jeff says, I find with every model I go through a love-hate thing as I add effects and weathering, etc. I I just love the design and concept of all of this um, skitari things. Um, me and my uh, friend Mark, uh, a long, long time ago, when the skitari stuff got released, it was... Um, we just fell in love with the design of it, and it was mostly at that time Skitari armies. Then they brought out Adeptus Mechanicus, and the Skitari are the, the, the military as such of the, the main fighting force of the Adeptus Mechanicus, um, which is the priesthood of Mars, essentially. I just fell in love with all these guys, and, I, and all I ever wanted was an army of Skitari. I didn't want all the, the priestly stuff to go with it. I like these guys. I like all the um, all the infantry dudes. I think they're fantastic. I, I love the robots. I've got these two here. I think they're fantastic. The data smith to go with them. They're absolutely fantastic. Um, I love the Onaga Doomwalkers. Here was one that was painted by my friends. They're just fantastic things. And um, my friend who painted this Doomwalker had a big change to his life. Um, cleared out his house of everything and said I donate to you all of my Skitari models and I have a box of them that I'm just working my way through um, so yes while I have an idea of what I want it to be in my head oh don't drop it um, I've still got a long way to go to kind of um, discover what it looks like properly to make it look effective um, and it might just be that I need to add some silver to this stuff here Otherwise, I have completed tonight's mission, which is getting all that brown on there. Took me longer than I wanted, and I ran out of brown doing it, but whatever. That pelvis thing in the back there, that is that is pretty terrible, if I'm honest with you. Um, so I'm hoping silver will hide a lot of that. Uh, don't judge me. <laughs> it took longer um, than I expected, uh, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. It's looking pretty gnarly, isn't it? And I'm, and I'm hoping that once the, um, once the base is painted... Uh, it will really pop, really, really pop, because that base sets the model above itself, doesn't it? Um, Overlord says that's very powerful, bringing people together. I, I absolutely agree. It was, it was. Um, while that kind of ultimately was the purpose of Easy Eight, it wasn't really something that I 
the concept of that wasn't what I thought of. It was just let's do something for people. You know, I, I didn't really think that deep about it. But now think about sticking around, and it has been some years. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm here to stay. I love it. I love doing what I do. And of course, I want hundreds of thousands of subscribers. But I know that it's a journey, and it should be organic, and it should be people coming along for the right reasons. I'm not an influencer. I'm not that kind of a guy. Uh, and neither are you, I, I hope, when it comes to this. This is what we do. This is our life. It's the thing that we choose to do in our spare time. And that's really important to, to acknowledge, isn't it? Um, long form. Uh, a painting session without jump cuts. Ah, cool. Brilliant. Um, I think that's what holds me back from massive amounts of subscribers. Your average YouTube channel is like 10 minute videos and YouTube doesn't recommends not going further than that because you want to be able to draw people in with short snappy videos that hit to the point but have luring um, uh, titles that you go like, oh, I'm, I'm going to come in and see what that's all about. Uh, when you make two hour live streams, a little break in the middle and you might get drunk from time to time. It's not, <laughs> it's not your usual video, um, but that's what I do. So deal with it, I suppose. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm -mm. Anyway, what time are we at? Look, we've got a couple of minutes. Um, let's think about what I'm going to do next. Silver. I think that it's prudent of me to carry on the weathering thing. I'm going to patch up with some silver here. It needs to be done. Um, then I'm going to do some brass on the um, on on these piston ramps. So you've got the, the, the actual bits here, the, the hydraulic shaft and then the bits that they kind of go into just to break it up a little bit and someone said last week that piston rams that the, the sockets i suppose whatever they might be called the bits at the end are often brass and i think that will bring a little bit of color play down there without being too distracting these hoses here on the back i like the way that the gray just kind of sets off there's there's no need to go too too detailed with it kind of like trying to make the the ribs like really dark recessed and the highlight on the edges it is what it is it's a hose it dangles it's got some brass bits on the end don't overthink it but i've got all these pipes that come off of this like because there's like a little slave guy underneath that is the, the machine itself right and he's got all of these pipes and controls and things that come off his stumpy little cut off legs that go into the legs of the machine and we've also got these pipes on the back of the legs here and i tried doing them black and they didn't stand out they kind of get lost and i want them to pop out a little bit I could do them brass, but I kind of get this idea that they're flexible and brass doesn't seem to be like, it's not a colour that I would, it's not conducive with being a flexible thing, right? Um, so I thought about doing them a colour that would kind of stand out a little bit. So what what colour would look effective? I was thinking about yellow because on my Gazgull, which is up there somewhere, um, yellow really stood out, but he's really dark. This is a bright model. So I was thinking about kind of bringing in some cooler colors. I've got the, the, the inked lenses. They look really smart. And I've got this blue overalls in here. So I'm thinking about a cool color to put on them that just kind of makes them look nice, you know? Um, so I think it was wolf blue or wolf gray. Oh no, somber gray or Gris Sombra, if you want to barbarically say a Spanish name. Um, that might be the colour to do it. And I think if I just did that now, just for funsies, while we're all here together, give it a bit of a shake. This is the colour that I painted the overalls on the the Skitari, because they've got their, their orange overcoats, but they've actually got like a blue overall. Can't really see it on the rider so much, but very, very clear to see on the, I call him the slave, the horsey guy, yeah. Um, and then I washed them with a with a blue, um, what's it called? It's just a blue tone from Army Painter, and it makes them look exactly the same colour as they do in the Codex, which is really cool. But the the colour that I could paint these bits look is just this sort of purpley, bluey, grey colour, and that stands out quite a bit. I quite like that. The reason I was thinking about using this colour is because it's a cool colour and I think that having a contrast of heat temperatures, heat temperatures, sorry, colour temperatures, what are you talking about? What's in this beer? <laughs> um, I think it's inter I think it's a good idea to have like a, a mix of colour temperatures, just something to kind of break up all the warm tones that are on this model. And I think that the silver is a neutral, I don't think it's a cool tone at all. But the dominating colour temperature is is warm, right? So having little accents of, of cooler colours is what I'm going for. But I also like using colours that are very similar or the same all over because it's unifying. 
There's not lots of colours. There's not a kaleidoscope. There's not a, a vomit of you know, like rainbows diarrhea all over my model. Having lots of colours might look really, really pretty and effective, but actually having colours that are used throughout, they're very unifying and they bring the whole thing together. To avoid it looking like the overall material, I won't wash them blue, I might wash them with something else. Maybe even a black. But already you can see that that stands out a little bit from the rest of well, the model. Is it, is it going to come in? Come on, come into focus now. Please. <laughs> there it is. Stands out a little bit. Enough, maybe. Maybe I've got to wash it. Maybe I've got maybe I've got to use a different colour and you know entirely, I don't know. But it it sort of pops. It sort of pops. And one of my problems because of ADHD is that I will hyper focus on these tiny little details that frankly no one else cares about. But it's important to me. And that's why it takes me so long to do these models, which is why it's been like what, since 1993 that I've been painting this model <laughs> it feels like it anyway look that's enough we're, we're, we're at the end we're at the end of our show and it's sad because we're getting some really new faces coming along and and that's making me really really happy but we've got to come away from here now it's what we do we paint some stuff and then it ends and it's a shame um sub and see you soon says Niels cheers I honestly thank you so much for coming along it's it's really made my day that we've got like three new people coming along and subscribers at, yeah it's it's wonderful I think I've missed the little subscription thing that came up from, from Niels Baptist so I'm going to do it again I'm just going to push the replay button on that um, thank you so much I don't know if it actually did it there did it there it is <laughs> um, thank you it really means the world to me um, yay for falling down juice yeah only in the second half though right Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, Stafford says I've said it before it's thanks to this program that I have so many painted models um, I would say you're welcome but it's you that's done the hard work so well done to you uh, if you look on Facebook uh, Kez has painted um, her entire uh, Battletech force in the time that Easy 8 has been running and not even like the whole time that Easy has been running like just a couple of years and it's a hell of a force uh, well done to you guys I think I've painted six models in the last four years Cheers. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, it's because of Easy 8 that I've got all of my current mechs painted. There we go. I should really read ahead before I start talking. But less money, huh? Um, yes. Yes, less money. Uh, Michael says, uh, well, I can say tonight was a success. Paint water was changed twice. <laughs> yeah, change of paint water. Um, because I always forget to do that. Um, yeah. Right. Over the next few days, I have very little time to be painting on this model, so we might be looking at doing this for another week, which is fine. I, I anticipated that. Um, where I work, uh, I'm doing a course I'm in my own time. Uh, I've got some coursework to do, and I'm very, very close to my deadline, and I've still got quite a swathe of work to do on it yet, and it's very important to me to do it, and my deadline is the end of the month. So the next couple of days where I could be putting time into painting this model and doing a little bit more, um, I'm going to have to... Um, kind of just retract from that a little bit while I kind of sort my life priorities out and a few other things kind of going on and uh, etc so I need to prioritize a little bit so it's unlikely that I'm gonna be able to do anything in the next few days maybe even this week so next week I'll be doing I'll be carrying on from here I'm gonna spend the next sort of half an hour maybe just maybe playing around with a little bit of silver on the weathering that I've done just to see how it sort of sits how it works um, so if you want to come and join me on Discord at the Easy A After Party, please do. Um, I'd love to chat with you, especially if you're if you're new to the show and you're just coming along today. But if you just fancy having a little catch up like we always do, I'll be on for a shorter amount of time today, but I will be there. Um, of course, on that, we're not just here on YouTube. We're on Discord at the Easy A After Party. We're on Facebook, which is very, very active. And we're on Instagram as well, which I keep on promising that I should update. Um, but I'm ADHD, man. So... I only remember once a week on a Friday. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I should really pull my finger out. Uh, Table of Horror says, it's a really nice environment. I just made that a sentence up. It's a nice environment to paint in. Really does feel like we have a little community together, a little club together. That's absolutely music to my ears. Thank you so much for saying it. Um, I hope so. I really do. Uh, I do it for you and I do it for me. And that's really nice, right? Um, 
If you want to see more of what we do um, and you don't know where to find us, just down there is a whole load of links to all of our platforms that we're on, all of the ones that we get together on. Um, and also down there is a, a load of links uh, of uh, people that I like, uh, companies that are really cool, uh, service providers that have got a good work ethic and a good standard. My dad, Jeff, who's in the live chat right now. Hi, dad. Uh, he's got Purple Lion Creations. He is a world-renowned and highly sought-after bespoke terrain builder who does wonderful stuff um, and a part of the really cool things that I said that is coming up very very soon with Easy8 and a big collaboration um, he is involved in in some way. We've got just a couple of weeks away some really really exciting news and it's an Easy8 first and um, I'm so excited and honoured to be a part of what is coming up so if you're excited about that um, stay tuned and get some friends to come along and subscribe right because i like i'm literally buzzing and i know that there's some people watching right now that are like oh it's really fun and um it's a big deal it's a really big deal so stay tuned for that stuff um if you like what we do uh please do subscribe um because it seems to be working right um three new people today just in the last half of this show um, if you know people that are interested, if you share like a little group of friends or whatever and you'll do the same sort of stuff, get them to come along. Please do subscribe, interact with the, with the show, um, drop comments in the comment sections down there. Let us know that you were here, like leaving graffiti on a wall. Uh, thumbs up the video if you liked the video, or even if you didn't, because it would make my day if you did. You just lie a little bit, yeah? <laughs> um, spread it, share it, whatever, because uh, it all affects the algorithm all hail the algorithm and the more that the algorithm is affected clearly more people are being introduced into the community and that's that's what i want to to do i don't know what i was going to say there um yeah subscribe man it's getting cool right well chuffed today well chuffed anyway um look it's been great what a wonderful way to finish off the show um i'll see you on discord in a few minutes if you want i'm going to go say hi to my partner and then i'm going to come back up here and we can chat for a little bit if you like until then, and until next week, uh, in the meantime, stay safe, be kind, keep on painting, and I will see you soon. Take care for now. Bye-bye. My music is really playing up today. Honestly, I try to make it as professional as I can, but it's just... I'm such an amateur.